Yeah. Hi, I'm Ellis. I'm in 10th grade. Hi, my name is Sterling. I'm in 7th grade. And I'm Danae Howe. I'm the assistant head of middle school, and I do equity and inclusion for the middle school. Okay, so first, uh, how does your job support the experiences of black students at SAS? I think at the center of it is getting the getting their voices heard, right? So we want to hear from the kids. Every experience is different and every kid is different. So giving them a chance to speak and creating spaces for them to meet and discuss and you know, share feelings. Uh, I think that is at the core of it. And then making sure that they're feeling comfortable that they can do that in their different classes. And um, yeah, creating opportunities for them to continue learning and work on their own identity, identity development, get to know about themselves, their history, uh, their families, getting to know them, uh, and just supporting them day to day as we have stuff going on, you know, mm -hmm. as they're learning and growing. Yeah. Who most inspired you in history? Oh gosh, who most inspired me in history? I would, I, I happen to be lucky enough to have a dad, actually, who was really involved in civil rights. He was a, he was a, a city councilman, but also he worked in SNCC, which is Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in Washington, D.C., and was a civil rights worker for a lot of his, well, his whole life. And so uh, I had that happening in the house. I had people that were coming over. They were talking about things. We were going, I remember when I was uh, a kid, we, there was no Martin Luther King Day yet. Like, it wasn't. It wasn't a holiday yet. And so um, we would go down to the Olympia Capitol building, and my parents would take us out of school anyway. And we would go, and we would have Martin Luther King Day off, even though the rest of the school and everybody else didn't. We'd go down there. We'd have like a march or a, uh, some, some kind of program there, and people would speak. And, and that, was, that was cool. So I was, I was used to having things happen, and I was around in a community that was really active. So uh, the people around me. Uh, you know, and then bigger figures, of course, you know, Martin Luther King, I think later, Malcolm X, you know, I went through more looking at, at that and, and learning more about other people in history. But I think right close to home, it was my, my dad. And his, his grandfather was actually um, really influential in, in civil rights, too. So uh, I had those stories. Okay. Uh, so, like, building on to that, like, how has your life experiences impacted the work that you do? Yeah, I mean, so much of that growing up, but then also when I was in high school, I, I was the like leader of this um, like diversity club kind of thing that would put on events. So all the way back to, gosh, I was like four, 14, 13, 14, uh, starting to create program there in that school. And then I ended up being on all these different committees and working on curriculum and doing that at that level. And um, gosh, and I got an award for that in high school. It was kind of cool. And then I, when I went on to college, University of Washington, uh, I, I did education. I was on scholarship for music, but I also uh, was doing an ethnic studies minor. So I learned a lot about stuff in ethnic studies. I uh, took a lot of African-American history there, learned about that. Um, and then uh, just moving through, I was always involved in something, always making sure that I was uh, learning and growing and reading and going to conferences and stuff. So uh, when I got into independent schools, then I started going to a people of color conference every year that's in different places where I would work together with other folks and just constantly work on my own professional knowledge and ability to help kids in the schools. Mm -hmm. What are some things you remember about Black History Month growing up? Uh, Black History Month wasn't really uh, a, a bigger thing for a lot. I mean, we we didn't even have Martin Luther King Day, but we we did we did do some Black History Month stuff. We had sometimes on some years maybe there'd be an assembly. Our school we would do something usually for Black History Month. We'd have a uh, when I was on that committee, we would have a speaker come in, and have an assembly, uh, maybe have some workshops. But in town, there wasn't a ton of stuff. At some different times, depending on who was in leadership in the city, we might have some have some marches or have some speakers come to the library or come to the Capitol buildings. I grew up in Olympia, so uh, yeah, I remember those things. And and you know, similar to what you might see now, you know, posters up around of different people, so you would know about civil rights and 
we would we would try and do some things, but yeah, I think it's great that this is happening that we're getting to see mm -hmm. a little more this year. Yeah. Um, well, what has been your experience as a black woman in STEM and like working at Microsoft and in the technology field? Yeah, um, well, I was lucky at Microsoft, actually, that mm -hmm. my boss was black. I had a, uh, another black person on my team there. Uh, the person that I learned like programming and stuff with that from was black, too. Uh, but I did run into people who would say, you know, oh, why are you doing that? Like, that doesn't seem like that would be your thing. Like, what? You're learning programming? You're learning, like, database stuff? Like, that doesn't seem like it'd be your thing. I don't know what they thought my thing was, but apparently they didn't think it was that. Mm -hmm. So I just had to think past it. I also had a really good friend that was, um, she went to University of Washington and she was, a, she was a model and she was getting a computer science degree and she ran into a lot of trouble where people were messing with her, um, with her projects and trying to delete it and they're like, you can't, do both of these things. And she was a good influence on me because she was like, yes, I can, and I will. And she does, and she's a, she's a computer engineer now. Uh, so, you know, I did have, and she's black too. Um, so, you know, I had other people that were kind of going through it, and so I had trouble, or I had, I did okay and just kind of wading through it and going like, I'm not listening to you, I, I'm smart, I can do this stuff, and, mm -hmm. and I just do it. Mm. What movies do you think best re represent black culture? Ha, huh, what movies <laughs> best represent black culture? Oh my gosh. You know what? I am, I don't know that I want to completely answer that because I think there's so many different ways to be black. And we get stuck in this idea that, you know, being black means being this certain kind of way. And they don't you know, we're not broad enough in the way we're talking about it and thinking about it, and we tend to limit ourselves and put ourselves in boxes. In a movie, you know, you have to have lots of different characters, and sometimes those genres of music do that continuing of putting people in boxes. But there are movies that I like. Um, I don't know if they represent, golly, I don't know. Old movies, there's like a boomerang, you know, like that one. I think that's funny. It has lots of different types of black people in it. Um, oh, gosh. I like Will Smith movies. Mm -hmm. um, I think that he has a, like a broad uh, representation of different characters across his career. Uh, yeah, but, you know, yeah, I think it, there's, so many, there's so many different ones. I wouldn't want to say just, just one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well... Uh what is it like uh, seeing SAS through the lens of a black faculty member and as a mother? And as a mother, yes. Uh, well, I want it to be good for my kid, right? I want this place to be some place that he will enjoy. You know, and I'm bringing him here as a parent and thinking, okay, I'm bringing you into the space I'm, because I believe in it. I mm -hmm. believe that it's a great education. It's a great place to be. I think your experience is going to be good. Uh, and so I'm making it and trying to continue to make it for all the kids, but also thinking as a, as a parent, what, how would I want, uh, when I'm speaking to other parents, how would I want somebody to come at me? You know, if I'm having a, have a conversation with another parent about their kid, I'm coming from the place of being a parent here too, and I can take on that perspective and say, how would I want somebody to help me navigate whatever the situation is if it was me? And because it's so close to home, um, it's, it's something that I, it's, it's easier for me to access maybe to talk about. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so there's that in my, uh, you know, you're, you're thinking about your, that you're growing an adult, right? You're, you're thinking forward in how you're working with kids and always thinking ahead to the messages that you're giving. And so, because as a parent, I'm thinking about that responsibility with him and giving him good messages every day and positive messages, I want to take that and that experience and do the same thing for the other kids that are here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you.